Well done, Capacity Crowd. Good evening. And good evening to you, whether you're listening on podcast or watching on YouTube. Welcome to this week's edition of Live to Pitch TV. I'm Mark Murphy, and let me say a big thank you to our sponsors for getting us on air. A big thank you to our main sponsor, DPS Tech. A massive thank you also to our other sponsors, All About Hearing, Marketing Company, Ginger Pickle, Forward Floors, Come Hither Design, The Hudson Group, Sound 4 Pro Audio, Venue 16, Fred Olsen Logistics, John Keeble Cars in Bramford, The Dove in Ipswich, and from next week, The Sofa will be sponsored by DPS Tech as well. Hooray! Yes, we are just expecting the sign to be built ready for that for next week. Uh, let me introduce you to the team. It's Terry Butcher. Hooray! It's Russell Osman. And it's Phil Ham from TWTD.co.uk. Uh, Rich is on technicals. Hooray! And can you give a big shout for Mark, who is part of our team? He's not been very well the last week. So if you say, get well soon, Mark. All the best, Mark. He'll appreciate that very much indeed. He's, uh, he's not been so well. Now, this week, we are absolutely thrilled uh, to bring you a very special man, a real star of Ipswich Town and many other clubs as well. Would you give a big capacity crowd welcome to... It's only Marcus Stewart, everybody. One Marcus Stewart. One Marcus Stewart. We're walking along, singing a song. Walking in Stewart Wonderland. There's only one Marcus Stewart. One Marcus Stewart. We're walking along, singing a song. Walking in Stewart Wonderland. <laughs> Marcus, welcome to the show. What a welcome. Yeah, lovely, yeah? We've heard that a couple of times before. Yeah. Well, I've got my gloves on as well. <laughs> We're going to mention the gloves a little bit later on, and I'm proud to say I've still got my originals uh, from back in the day. They're a bit holy now, but uh, they still come out from time to time. Look, welcome to Life's a Pitch TV. Uh, who knows what's going to come from Terry and Russell? You know them both very well. And, and of course, Phil Hamm has probably interviewed you a few times over the years and thrown a few googlies. So are you ready for the next hour or so? Yeah. Well, Sam, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, I'm quite happy because Away Day Beers have been in touch. And not only have they been yeah. in touch, they've sent us some. So I've got some uh, IP118 beer, Ed Sheeran beer. I've got a bottle of the Beat beer. I've got some Hoppy Robson. I'm drinking some Kieran McKenna Artois. And, Marcus, I've got a, a can here of Marcus Brewitt beer, everybody. Marcus <laughs> Brewitt. So how does it feel to have a beer named after you? Uh, they sent me um, they sent me some last year, maybe this time last year. And I, li I like my ass. Winter times I like an owl. Summer times being a Bristolian, I like, like a cider now and again. Um, so I thought I'd give it a go. You're not sure, are you? But actually, it's really nice. It's quite. It's got like a sweet taste to it. I really like it. Um, if I live closer, I'd buy more. <laughs> well, I know it's Josh is watching. Yeah. Josh, Josh is watching, Marcus. So he'll probably send you a box. Josh has done great for the charity. He's, he's done. He's done a lot of stuff. You know, um, donated um, a certain percentage of his beer sales and, and certain games when the fans go there. So he's been a big supporter of uh, the Derby Room Foundation. So you know, I really appreciate it. He knows that. And, and how are you at the moment? How are things with you? Yeah, I'm fine. Um, you know, we've got a lot of events coming up. Um, Nothing, you know, I've, I'm, to be fair, I haven't given an update. Um, it's almost been two years now since I've been diagnosed. I was diagnosed less than two years ago in January the 6th. So just over that time. Um, in terms of pro progression, not loads really. I mean, you know, six months ago, I had a little tiny use. I would say I have 100%. I had probably 30 or 40% use of my arm and my hand, you know, be able to grip something. Now I'm probably, I've got about 10% use of it. Um, and it's starting to creep into my right arm and my right hand. Um, but I have full use of that. Um, but as you can imagine, in cold weather, you know, most people's hands get cold and it's hard to use them anyway, but it's even worse for me. Um, so, you know, that's that's it for me. The progression in two years is just creeping into my right hand, but I can use it. So, like I say, I'm lucky because um, it's pretty slow with me. So hopefully in my time, there, there'll be a cure and... With everyone fundraising and everyone raising awareness, we've got every chance in the world, you know, with the rugby community getting involved and now hopefully get the football community involved as well because um, 
you know, that needs to happen. I know lots of town fans are very keen to uh, to support you with an event here locally, and I know there's lots of talk on your message boards, Phil, about that. Um, you know, potentially how town fans could um, support something, do a walk, do a run, do some kind of challenge, perhaps. Yes, because you, Marcus, you've got an event coming up soon, haven't you? And in in, uh, in March, there are a lot of players involved. Yeah, so it's March of the day, um, and good name. It, when it, it's from the twenty second of March till uh, the twenty fourth, which is Friday till Sunday, and it's taken in nineteen football clubs, uh, one hundred and seventy five miles over the weekend. You know, some people are going to be doing uh, two thirds of that, or some 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 might do all of it. Um, but anyone can join in. You know, it's you can do as little or as much as you want to do. Um, of course, there's a core group doing it. Um, with sponsors and stuff like that but you know uh, each club we're going to if you if you want to just join in you can but what i would say as well if you if you can't make it to the that event which starts in bradford and finishes at, at anfield taking in the 19 clubs kind of on the way so it's bradford um down to Oldham road over to oldham uh salford city afc man, man- manchester Man United, Man City, back up to Blackburn Way, Blackpool. So it takes in all those areas, all those areas, Accrington, and then to uh, Everton and um, other clubs, and finishes at Liverpool on a Sunday night. Um, but you know, you can if you want to do it in your own area, and you can't get to that to, to, to that area of the country, then do it in your own area if you want to. You're more than welcome to. It'd be great to have some support. So we got we actually got an Ipswich fan that is doing it. Um, bear with me a second. Uh, they're doing it from Derby. To Burton Albion, so it's the Ipswich um, Town Midlands group. They're doing it. Derby to Burton, uh, and from uh, the Weybridge Inn in, in Burton, and her name is Mandy Muir. She, she uh, emailed my wife today, and they're getting involved. So they're doing their own uh, little walk, seventeen miles, I think it is, between Derby and Burton, uh, because obviously they can't get up to Bradford, so they're doing their own, own little walk themselves and raising awareness. So. Yeah, the more people out in the streets on that particular weekend would be brilliant because obviously, you know, there's going to be a lot of us up uh, up in the, in the north, north and the northwest um, doing it. So other bits of the country can uh, can fly the flag and bang the drum. That'd be brilliant. So everyone can get involved. Um, you know, you go onto Redwood Events. Uh, you go onto their website, and you can Google Redwood Events, and it, it will come up. All the itinerary will come up, or, or the schedule of what's going on what days, what times, uh, and you can register on there as well. So um, get involved, you know, well, and hopefully it's a big event. Yeah, yeah, at the moment, so. I think we've over 60 ex-pros and 60, you know, with managers involved, managers as well. So uh, I think that will grow uh, with the, the, you know, the marketing and the, we can do with, around that between now and, the, and March. Hopefully, you know, with BBC Breakfast the other day, kind of promoting it with me and Stephen, uh, alongside talking about what's going on with us. Hopefully we can we can raise more well awareness of this event that's going on um, because I think it'd be big. You know, obviously Kev Simfield and Rob Burrows have done loads um, between them as a team. Um, if we can get you know the football community involved, like like they've got the rugby community involved, along with Doddy, of course, and Ed Slater, then we have a chance of beating this disease. We really do. I mean, I really believe that. You know, um, I mean, ten years ago, if you got MND. You know, you might have been in a bit of trouble, but I think these days, I think we're so close to, to finding a cure. Um, we just need more investment to help the scientists to, to you know, get to the details and get, get to the nuts and crannies of what's going on with MND. Um, if not a cure, uh, some sort of treatment that will extend life by, by, by years and not, not months or days. So we can only do that now. So hopefully in our time, Everyone's contributed that, and everyone's, everyone eventually will be part of the cure, whether you raised a pound or, or a thousand pounds. Well, I'm pretty certain there'll be lots of town fans who want to get involved and, and support you. And, and Marcus, we had a, a little Life to Pitch committee meeting before uh, we came on air this evening, um, and we'd like to donate £250 to, uh, to the cause, so we'll make sure that that's in the bank to the Derby Rimmer Foundation straight after the show tonight. Thank, thank you very much. I, I know for a fact that hasn't come out of Russ or Butch's pocket because they're <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Charming, that, isn't it? Yeah, OK, then. Touché, Still only a pint, he's, by the way. He started off now, so I think we'll... <laughs> yeah, off you go, boys. I think it's we'll, open season now. I think we'll finish. The gloves yeah. are off now. The gloves Terry, are right off. Those Marcus Those, Stewart gloves are off. Yeah, they're right off, so, yeah. yeah. Sorry, am I allowed to swear or no? Yeah, go on, go for it. We can just tick a box, it's fine. <laughs> uh, no, 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 I'm not going to swear. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free. I don't think we've ticked the box all season, so it, it would be quite a, quite an event no, for us. I think, to I think we've had a couple. I think we've had a couple. We've had a couple, yeah, haven't we? Yeah, but, you know, yeah. we're, we're doing well so far on yeah. that on that score. But Marcus, as long as you can hold a pint with the left with, with the right hand now, especially then that's not too bad. But uh, you know, oh, you can manage that. Okay, you can do that, can you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. I, the, the funny th- the th- funny thing is, you know, I, I kind of measure it like that. So a year ago, <laughs> I could pick a pint of course. With my left hand. Uh, but sometimes I say a couple of tea, but it depends what audience I have around. Uh, whereas now I can't pick, pick, pick a pint up with my left hand, so I have to use my right. Uh, so that's fine. So eventually I'll have to kind of get my hands together and grab the pint like that, or someone will have to pour it down my neck. <laughs> uh, but no, that's how I kind of gauge things, you know, a little bit by picking things up. So it's a, uh, yeah, I, I have a few with Russ the other, the other week, didn't we, Russ? Yeah, after yeah. The night. nice quiet evening, mate. Quiet. In the Greyhound, by the way, but by the way, the Greyhound have been brilliant as well. They've done loads of fundraising, so yeah. whenever I'm up in Ipswich, I always try and go in there and support them. Yeah, yeah, that's a good. Point. I'll make sure I walk a few miles for you on uh, that weekend as well, mate. Somewhere down the line. <clears throat> Golf course, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Golf course with my clubs on my bag with that nice little <laughs> MND mo. Um, uh, that'd Darby be great. Yeah, I mean, I, I know we're just joking, but it'd be great, Russ. You know, anyone that can get involved. Um, wherever you are just we'll be there just, one way or the other mate just bang the drum just bang the drum well it, it's amazing what you're doing I mean there was a huge amount of reaction to that BBC Breakfast interview wasn't there How, how's that been for you this week uh, manic really I mean but I quite like it like that um, you know it's gone it's gone quiet not quiet but you know everyone wants to uh, get involved somehow so it's, it's nice that there's something there there to to kind of look forward to and get involved in a big event and BBC have been brilliant as you know with with what they've done with Rob and Kev and now they're jumping on you know up helping me and Stephen out um, with uh, the dark dark rumor stuff and trying to get the football community on board so there you know Claire Ryan's been great she's 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 pushed it as much as she can so to get a 10 minute slot from BBC breakfast national breakfast is a is a massive win for uh, for MND I think well, I think he deserves a round of applause for what he's doing, don't you, everybody? Fantastic. We'll talk more about you and your careers uh, at various clubs a little bit later on, Marcus, but let's uh, talk about Ipswich Town. Uh, it's time for our look at the season so far, sponsored by the Dove in Ipswich. <laughs> Uh, last episode, we covered all, all of December. Uh, it's nice to have you back, Russ, by the way. Uh, we you. missed you Thanks last you. episode. I just remembered that Thank in the you. script. Um, uh, FA Cup action, Phil. Yes, I think, you know, we went through fairly relatively easily, really, in the end. 3-1 away against the League Two club. I think that's kind of what you want. You want, you know, um, the team was switched around a bit, but still using quite a number of the, the rec- first team regulars. People like Sammy Morsi, who obviously is suspended for the next two games, so we'll need to... Otherwise, wouldn't have a match until I think the twenty seventh of uh, February, um, uh, January. Um, so yeah, I mean, we went ahead, didn't we, fairly early on? Um, the own goal, which was I think own, not not just an own goal, an own assist there as well. I think because it sort of hit two people on the way through, um, and then they got a penalty, which was a penalty. It was one of these kind of penalties that um, you, you, the, the ball sort of came onto him so quickly he couldn't get out of the way, but it's still a penalty, isn't it? Under stupid, the letter of the law. It was a stupid penalty, Phil. Do you think it was a stupid penalty? Why had your hand up that high there? It was ridiculous. Yeah, that's true. I suppose he had his arm up. but it Have did, you ever it, done, I've never done that. But it flicked off Twenzabi's head, didn't it, in front of him? And so he, you, I don't no, know. there's no excuse, Phil. No excuse. Right? Anyway, <laughs> anyway, it was a penalty it was and crap. it was the right decision. Yeah, it was crap. <laughs> and it was, and, and, um, but I thought, you know, we, we kind of came, then got the, the goal from Twenzabi, his first goal for uh, his first goal in senior football actually you'd thought a, a centre half like that would have scored a few more goals in his career up to now um, like yourselves uh, thank you and then um, don't, you, don't you compare Twain's Abbey to S2 I'll tell you no, that. No, no. What, you don't think you're as good as them no I'll see you in the car park <laughs> later on, <but laughs> come on and um, uh, yeah and then obviously we got the uh, 
the, the third goal at the end after Harry Pell. Who, Harry Pell is a walking red card, isn't he? Every time we come up against him, it's a surprise when he doesn't get sent off. Though this time it was less of a surprise that he did get sent off. Um, arm swinging, you know. It's, it's, uh, and uh, yeah, and then the goal at the end, um, Jack Taylor taking it off uh, Gerard Buabo's uh, feet, who <laughs> clearly wasn't <laughs> particularly chuffed because he thought he was going to score his first senior goal. But, you know, 3 1 um, in the hat. And then the draw with Maidstone. Um, which is now on telly, isn't it? Which is now on BBC One, yeah. 12.30 kickoff on um, the 27th of January. Um, and I think a, a very good opportunity for us to qualify for the, the fifth round for the first time since 2007. What, what odds will <laughs> we be? 100 to yeah. 1 on or something like that? Something ridiculous, I yeah. should think. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I think obviously we'll play a very um, junior team in that, I would imagine. Do you but, think um, the whole change, 11 changes? <laughs> Something like that, yeah, yeah. He won't, uh, he won't, he won't field many players. He's, he's risking. But, um, but having said that, throughout this period, we've got not too many midweek games, have we? So um, he might want to just sort of keep it a bit more, uh, keep keep people kind of ticking over. A few so. new faces, Phil. Yeah, we get a chance of an appearance. Well, we could have new. F- I mean, obviously, we've, we've we've brought in two players, haven't yeah. we? Um, and and um, uh, and one of them made a, an appearance on Saturday, um, Sarmiento, and um, the other fellow will make a. Uh, Lewis Travis will make his debut so on Saturday. Is it not a bit like Luongo when Massimo Luongo joined but this time last year? Yeah. Everybody was saying, well, I wonder if he's going to fit in. I wonder what he's going to do. But look at the impact he had. Yes. And yes. you sort of hope that Travis has that same impact or pushes the others to to compete better because there's more competition in there in the middle of the park. Yeah. And I think also he's brought in for his leadership qualities. He's been captain at Blackburn. I think t- Tony Mowbray made him captain at, uh, at Blackburn. And uh, I think you get the impression reading between the lines that him and the current manager there don't get on too well because you don't send your captain out on loan, do you? And there's, there's some kind of underlying thing, I think. Um, and uh, yeah, so I think he, he's, he's been brought in for that side of it. He's obviously kind of a bit more of a um, a bit of bite, adding a bit of bite to that midfield, I think, and in, in Sammy Morsi's absence for the next couple of games. But also, I suspect it probably means Dominic Ball will be on his way, don't you? It's, he's not really, you don't really see where he's going to get a game if you've brought in another player in that role. Could be. What we actually need, and I'm sure everybody here in the capacity crowd uh, would agree, is uh, someone to come in like happened <laughs> a few years ago from <laughs> Huddersfield uh, and arrived at Ipswich Town and uh, made a fantastic uh, end to the season possible for us. Uh, Marcus Stewart, we'd like you um, cloned, please. Maybe a slightly younger version, but we're looking for you, someone like you, to come in now as a striker and push us up into the Premier League. Is is? But they're so hard to find, aren't they? Yeah, yeah I'm sure Kieran's... Um looking for someone uh, because I think, you know, you can do all the pretty football, but when it comes to putting the ball in the back of the net, you have to get the right person in or the right people. You know, back in our day, of course, it's me, John O'Scoey, Richard Naylor. Um, so I think you need two, three or four, you know, the, if you want a, a good push. Um, but, you know, you got to trust in Kieran in, in the current regime because they've done a great job since they, they, they've been in. So, uh, I think it'd be a case of they have to get the right person. It's not like it's going to be a panic, panic kind of signing. I can't see that kind of thing happening with Kieran. I'm sure he's prepared and looked at players already. And I would have thought he would have been looking at those players from the start of the season, not just in the past two weeks. So uh, whoever they get in, I'm sure they will, uh, will, will be the right person for the club, not just as a player, but someone that wants to play for the club and be there as well. Um, so yeah, I think you just got to trust what they've done uh, in the in the past year and a half, two years. Um, so trust them now. Uh, yeah, I'm sure they're searching for the right person. But like I say, it has to be the right kind of personality that plays in amongst those players. Because to me, when I watch them and I'm, I'm there, the unity amongst those players is quite strong. But more importantly, I think the unity between players and the fans is back as well. Um, which is hasn't been seen probably since, you know, I was there. Um, so it's a it's a nice feeling going back to it, which at the moment and watching them because everyone's together. I know results help help that um, feel good factor. I get that, but you still have to have the right people in the right places, and generally they've got that right. So just trusting them. But Marcus, just that you say the right the right people. What sort of striker would you go for? It's like someone like yourself, a bit of pace, a little bit of a Jack the lad in the middle, you know, up front and all this I mean, sort of thing. You've got, you've got obviously you've got Connors, who I think is a really bright player, a really bright 
number 10-ish, you know, um, how, how he kind of plays, plays in behind. I know he, he makes runs in behind, but he doesn't play up against people. I think you need someone maybe, I think you've got bright players in that on, on that pitch, along with energetic ones as well. They, they've got a player, most most of those players have got a lot of, a lot of good assets to their games. I think they need someone um, that's clever uh, and can, a little fox in the box, you know, that's, that's what I think they need. Um, someone who's a clever striker um, and has a good football understanding and has a connection with mid midfield players. Um, doesn't have to be necessarily a target man. I think Broadhead's very good at that. I think he's a menace up front whenever I've watched him. Chases things down. He gives defenders a, a hard time. Uh, I just think you need a, a right player that makes clever little runs in behind, back, in behind defenders. Um, where to get that from, I don't know. And they might not even be looking for that. That's just my opinion. One of the players that's been mentioned a lot as a target is Jay Stansfield, who I think you probably know from Exeter. Jay, yeah. I, I mean, I was best friends with his dad, um, who obviously passed away. We were both Exeter together, me and, uh, me and Adam. Uh, and, you know, he got diagnosed, of course, and died within six months of bit diagnosis. So off the back of that, we became real good family friends. We were real good family friends before that, but... Um, we stay, I stay in touch with Jay now and again, and I stay in touch with his, his wife, Marie. Um, and we're still going out and see them now. They live, in, they live in Tiverton, which is, you know, 50 minutes south of Bristol. So we try to go and see him whenever we can. I know it's hard um, for them. Obviously, she's going up to watch Jay quite a lot. Now he's at Birmingham. But um, what I would say is what I know about Jay um, as a person, he's a very humble lad. Um, and he hasn't got sucked into the system yet. What I mean by that? He's he's kept his feet on the ground. It's not about cars. It's not about houses. It's about football. It's about the money comes with the success, and he doesn't see it the other way around. So, if Jay was to come to that club, and I've watched him play, I remember watching him watching him when he was about seventeen years old, and he scored a couple of goals for Fulham. Um, you just get sent the videos, and I looked at them, and the finishes are just natural. You know, little chips over the goalkeeper as he's coming out. You can't coach that type of thing. He's just got a coolness in front of goal. Um, but I wouldn't say he's a just a six-yard box goal scorer. He could score from outside the box as well, um, like he's shown with Birmingham a couple of times. If he went to if he went to Ipswich, personally, I think he he he's proved himself at Birmingham, um, and I think it, as a as a team player, um, he will fit into that club very well. Personality wise, you ain't got no trouble about Jay. He's he will fit in. Um, as a player, he's very clever as well. He's not blessed with, he's not slow. He's a strong runner with above average pace, but he's not lightning quick. Raheem's sterling lightning quick, but he's got a good engine in, on him. He's got a heart like the size of a drum. And I think um, he's a young lad and I think he's learning his trade, but he's got, he's, he's a very clever football player. Um, very bright. Marcus, you're so, not, you're not his agent, you know. are you? You're not his agent at all. <laughs> No, I'm not. But I'm just saying what I see. <laughs> no. You know, I I can't speak highly enough of of, of him as a person, and uh, I think he's got. A, I said I think he'll play for England one day, and I believe that. I think he'll play for England if he stays clear of injury. Um, I think he will play for England. Don't tell him that, so I don't want him to. But that's what I think. Well, I'm I'm off down the bookies now to put some money on him <laughs> signing for Ipswich. So yeah, wow, you've you've sold him to me, uh, Marcus. Unbelievable. But you know strikers, you know, you know what they're like. You know, your favourite player was Gary Lineker. <laughs> but I looked at your record, and it's a hell of a record that you've got. I did a bit of research on you. G uh, Gary Gary Lineker never had a booking, but you've had several, and you've had three red cards as well. It's just uh, <laughs> so you didn't you didn't you didn't though. follow his sort of uh, attitude, but. Uh, you, yeah, and every time you got sent off, you got sent off late in the game. Were you knackered or something, or you just want to have a? You just wanted to get in the bath early. Uh, you know what? But it's a serious, right? When I was young, I I, I knew that Gary Lineker could never be sent off, um, and I I kind of did try my hardest to be that. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I actually did. I tried my hardest to be. That I tried my hardest never to batch at the referee. I know it's, we know it's all frustrating sometimes when, you know, you think you're hard done by on the pitch. But I did, um, and I kind of, I did, Gary. Sorry, Butch, but 
I, I looked I, yeah. I looked up to Gary as a player. I didn't know him as a person. Do you know him as a person? What's he like? Um, we'll move on to the next question. Yeah, he's all right. He's all right, Gary. But yeah, Marcus. Thirty-two years ago, I played against you at Twerton Park, and nine minutes into the game, there was a brawl, and you were right in the middle of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you beat uh, us four nil. Listen, it's you know what it's like sometimes, Russell. It's, 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 it just you happens, know, doesn't it? Is is fueled by the fans and the fact the rivalries to the fans are fueled by the players a bit. So I think there's a bit of bravado there as well, just to kind of show the fans you care a bit. Um, uh, but yeah, I don't remember that. Proper um, derby though, mate. That was crikey. Yeah, they are, they are good derbies. Yeah, they are, they are good derbies. They're, 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 they're aggressive and they're, as a player and off the pitch, you know, you know what it's like. It kicks off in, in town. I remember, I remember we had a game against City once, um, it was New Year's Day, uh, or New- I'm not sure. It was around about that time, of, that time of year, and the game was called off uh, in the morning. And my dad had come down to to come and watch the game with a few friends. So off the back of that, first thing you think of, I'm going to the pub. So Strong we went both. to Bristol, um, into the centre, and obviously fans were having a few beers before the game and, and hoping the game was going to be on. And we bumped, walked into this pub, and it was didn't realise, but it was full of. Bristol City hooligans, <laughs> and, and I'm thinking. Uh, so I walked in, and within within two minutes, I reckon if we want to walk back out, we would have had a fight within five minutes. The wrong so, side of the river, pal. Wrong side of the river, yeah. But uh, you know, when you're young, and I was only nineteen, twenty at the time, so I don't like to get involved in that stuff. When I go out, I just want to have a few beers, and that's it. So that's what it's like there. You know, you you you've got to be really careful. I mean. I mean, did you get any trouble, Ross, with Rovers fans when you were around? No, they both hated me. Both lots hated me. <laughs> <laughs> Bristol City so hated me more when I was the manager. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you, you, you yeah. first time Ipswich fans came across you was playing, I think, was it your first game for Bristol Rovers when you scored in that, that game? At, uh, it was Twerton Park, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. It was a year you got, it was, a, it was a year, at the time before you got promoted to the Premier League. Yeah, 91 season, 92. Yeah. Was not, and yeah, that's you know, Milts was in the team. Um, Jason Dazelle, people was, like that. Yeah. It, it was my home debut as an 18 year old. It was, uh, it was, I just finished as a scholar. A guy called Carl Saunders, player, got suspended la- the, se- the last game of the season previously. He got suspended, suspended for the first three games. So he got sent off last game of the season before, suspended for the first three, three games of the season that I was becoming a pro. So I obviously played pre-season and then, and then I, I had the opportunity to play three games because he was injured. So I'd done all right in pre-season. The manager put me in, um, uh, Martin Dobson, I think it was, at the time. Uh, uh, and I scored in my debut for Ipswich. We, we were two, I think we were 2-0 down, or it might have been 3-0 down. Yeah, I think it's 3-0 time. down, yeah. Yeah, and we ended up drawing the game three each. I scored one to make it 3-1. And then Big Devon White gets a couple uh, and we end up drawing the game on a sunny day, sunny, dusty day at Twerton Park, as you know, the pitch wasn't the best. Whether it was cold, uh, whether it was dry or soft, you, you, there was no irrigation there, natural irrigation of the rain. Uh, and you know, uh, that year you went up, uh, and well, Ipswich went up. So, uh, yeah, it was a great, a great memory. I, I don't, I don't remember who else played in the team top of my head. Um, what well, in the Ipswich team? Not, people like Craig yeah. Forrest and um, David Linigan, um, Paul Goddard. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Steve so Whitten. Kawamia might have played. Chris Kawamia, definitely Chris Kawamia. Yeah, Jason Zell. Um, Forrest was in goal. Forrest was being goal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Who Zell was playing, yeah. Brian Gale uh, probably been playing yeah, then. Yeah, Scott Bell would have played. Sorry? Scott might have played. I don't know. Oh, I yeah, so that was the time, you know, obviously didn't know what would happen in my career. I couldn't foresee what's going to happen in the future and end up playing for... The best club in the country. Excellent. Yeah. You've said the right thing there as yeah. the capacity crowd. Yep, well done. What did um, what did George say to you to bring you to Ipswich from Huddersfield, Marcus? It, it, not, I don't remember, is the truth. Um, I just, you, could you not understand him? To... Could you not understand him at all? He's, he had <laughs> subtitles or something? He didn't have to say anything to me, is, is the truth. The club kind of sold itself. Um, you know, off the back of the conversation with Steve in... in, in 
Um, and I obviously drove down to the training ground off the back of the conversation on a Tuesday afternoon. Uh, on, on the way down, I had a long time to think about what I was doing. Um, a four hours drive. And there was nothing I could think of that would make me not sign for the club. It is the truth because although Huddersfield were up there at the time, um, Ipswich had two or three seasons before where they had experience of being at the top and challenging in the playoffs and being in playoffs to get in the Premier League with obviously not succeeding. So I generally thought I could add some value to the club um, in some sort of way. Uh, I didn't know how or what would happen, of course, when I went in there because, you you know, you, that's how it works. Uh, it happened to be, it worked for me. It, the club fitted perfectly. Um, you know, we, I, I'm sure you guys have signed for clubs, Russ, and, and the club just doesn't fit for some reason. Uh, I probably, have, I've had that probably out of the seven, eight clubs I've been at, I've probably had it one or two. So I was, and I'm just glad that it was one of them that it fitted and it, it just worked out. The football suited me, the player suited that around me suited the way I played. Um, and the lads were a special bunch of people. They were, they were, we had a great team spirit and togetherness. And I'll never forget that because you don't, you don't realize at the time what you've got and what, what teammates you had until you probably get to my age now and older that you, you understand what a special group that we were. And it, I mean, the first game was at Barnsley, wasn't it? Debut at Barnsley and then home debut was against Huddersfield. Wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Weird, weird, yeah. So Barnsley away. I think I might have tra- trained in. So I lived. I think obviously I was at Huddersfield and Huddersfield and Dar- uh, Barnsley is a bit of a, a derby itself, Yorkshire derby. Um, so the first game, and that's where me and Jen, Jim, Jim and Jim had that connection. Started that game, um, uh, and we won. Yeah, we won. We obviously won, it and I scored on my day away debut, and then we, we, the, a weird feeling of bittersweet I suppose because I've just scored on my home debut for Ipswich didn't play didn't really have loads of touches of the ball but I had one opportunity and I put it away uh, but it was a bittersweet moment because obviously I've scored just against my old club who I had full respect for and I had great times up there with great people but I've just scored for my new club as well so uh, and I knew that a 2-1 win could be really important you know, for the run in at the end of the season because, you know, it's February time. Um and, you know, we were chasing chasing still get automatically promoted then. So bittersweet, but uh of course I'm you you always want to I think it's really important as strikers especially to when you go to a new club, you have to get off to a good start. Um and score hopefully in your first two or three games because I think if you do that it kind of gives you a little bit of confidence, you know, I think um whereas if that didn't happen you know what players are like, fans are like, not on your back, but they're, they're kind of wondering when's he going to score, when, is, is this the right sign? And, you know, and everyone thinks like that. So I think it's really important. So to score my first two games, first home and away, was was a good feeling, really, because I was off the mark pretty early and I wasn't, didn't feel any pressure after that until I got injured and then came back into the team. Um, so, yeah, I kind of I was, ready, I was ready for the playoffs, I think. I was going to say, the playoffs, you didn't score again until the playoffs, did you, I don't think? And um, no. the game away at, at Bolton, I was on that terrace that day. And we'll... Yeah, we've, we've had a message in about oh. that uh, from uh, Mr. Sedgwick's tweets. Um, thank you for those two goals against Bolton in that semi. Uh, a question for you, Marcus. Which is better, the first goal against Bolton or the recent one by Wes Burns? <laughs> Which would you say was the better of the two goals? Ask Mr. Cedric's tweets. Um, uh, uh, this was a brilliant... It was a team goal as well. What just to finish itself. It, it, it was a team goal. Out from the back, up front, you know, out wide, cuts inside, bends it in with his outside his right foot. Um, I would say, as a team goal, that's probably good. But the occasion in which the one I scored was obviously the biggest occasion um, so I, I, they're not comparable really if he does that in the playoff semi-final this season hopefully it's, that's not the case and it's an automatic promotion then I think his goal would have been better mm. but you, I mean we look I was going to say we looked dead and buried at that point well those of us that had been watching town in playoffs year in year out 
Um, we were kind of a bit worried at that point until your shot, until you scored. I mean, how did it feel on the field at that point, 2-0 down at Bolton? I mean, you know, I've not been I've not been in that situation. It's the first time I've been involved in a championship playoff. I've been involved in League One before that for Bristol Rovers against Huddersfield, and we lost that day. Um, that was a final, though. So it was the first time I've been involved in a playoff semi-final and final um, in the championship to get in the Premier League, you know, the biggest stage of all. So I knew that the, the next goal, we went 2-0 down. For me, it was, here we go, 2-0 down, still in the game, like you are, 3-0 down. It's a tough one, even though there's two legs. Uh, next goal is really important, as we all know. 3-0 uh, down, 2-1, two, two it's a big difference. So I think that that goal to get us back to 2-1 was the volley. I know it's the volley um, to get us back to 2-1. And I think that was more important than the second goal. Mm. Well, and that for many so, people, that that semi-final two games, two games against game. Bolton were the, the, the highlight, the best games. There's some nods in yeah. the capacity crowd here. I mean... They they were just fantastic games, weren't they? To 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 play in and certainly to watch as a fan, amazing. I mean, the first game was more open, you know. It's more of a football game, you know. Uh, they didn't sit back; they were at home and they had to come at us and you know try and get goals themselves. Whereas the second game, it was a case of let's do a mid block and just see what they can do, bully them a bit, get stuck into them, um, street wise, kicks off the ball, all that sort of stuff they were doing, um, and it almost worked for them, but. It didn't because, you know, the way we played, we people didn't realise we could get, we could be as tough as anyone on the pitch, and but we could also play football as well. So, uh, and I think you need those kind of attributes to be able to be a, be a good team and to adapt to what other what other teams can do to you. Um, so yeah, I mean, as well, you know, in the playoff semi final, the first leg we've gone a goal down, second leg we've gone gone down as well. And in the final, we went a goal down. So, of all three legs, we've gone come from behind the two semi-finals and the final. We've had to come from behind three times um, in those games to win the playoff final. So, that takes a certain amount of resilience for me uh, and, and and belief in your teammates and in what the process is, what the manager is trying to say to you. So, so yeah, I don't think uh, weak-minded teams do that sort of thing. Who was at Wembley in 2000? Quite a few of the capacity crowd. Uh, how did that feel when the final was went, Marcus, knowing that you were Premier League bound and heading back to Ipswich, I think, to um, Trinity Park to the Suffolk showground for a bit of a party? Yeah, I, rem- I don't remember that bit, but I remember going out to the party. Uh, <laughs> uh, I remember Jim taking over the microphone, and that's, I think that's the point. I fell asleep. Uh, 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 so, But, of course, you remember the, you know... The being on the pitch and taking a moment. Now, I remember just being on the pitch and just stood there, just watching everyone, and just I took I took a moment to myself to kind of reflect on what just happened, and it's almost a relief. You're, you're not oh, you're ecstatic when the, the initial final whistle goes. Of course, I was on the bench at the time. I was sat next to David Johnson because uh, Martin Musso came on for me and obviously got the winner. Uh, not the winner, but it was the one that kind of closed the game out. A couple of minutes to go, so I think you just start it then, and then the acceleration turns to kind of right what we just done, kind of thing. Um, and I just remember we stood on the pitch, just taking it all in and just watching everyone celebrate. I only did that for about 30 seconds, but I remember that pretty clearly in the head. In the dressing rooms, I don't remember what it was like. Um, obviously, celebrations and champagne and whatever was coming out, I don't know, beers. Um, uh, and then obviously the journey home, which I remember really clearly. Uh, it was a sunny day. It was the bridges on the way back on the eight. I always get the A12 and A14 mixed up. It's the A12. The A12, 12. yeah. Yeah, the A12. Um, and just people on the bridges, you know, on the junctions, well, at certain junctions as you're going back up the A12, just with flags and cheering. Um, and I always, after a game, I don't know what you guys were like, Russ, and, but I used to come, I used to sit at the back, whether we had one loss, one loss or draw, whatever, whichever one, and then I'd have a good hand in front and I'd sit next to the driver for half an hour, maybe an hour sometimes, just sit on my own. Uh, and I did that for most clubs I was at. I just wanted to be out of the way, 
and just have a moment to myself. And I sat down next to the driver. I don't remember, remember his name now. And I just took in. So I had, a, I had a premium seat to see everyone on the bridges. And that's how I remember it um, during that hour. Did, you, did, time you, have, I did you have a beer with you as well? You must have had a beer. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> no, no doubt about that. Um, it would have been some sort of bottle or, I don't know, like Peroni or something like that. We did that, didn't we? Yeah, we did that. We, 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 what we did you do on the back. bus on the way back then? Well, you drink. You just used to go down to the down to see wheels at the front. The uh, driver, Trevor Curtin, and he would bore me, and then Russell would go down, and he would bore Russell. So, uh, but we we used to go that if we used to win away from home, we used to go down the front and have a, have some beer. And in those days, you could have some beer on the bus, and we would just toast all the away supporters. It was great. They would. <laughs> They didn't like that very much as well. So, yeah, we did that. But bus journeys home from victories like that was just special. They live they live in your memory forever. They really do. We've got lots of questions, yeah. and I want to rattle through a lot of questions that people have sent in uh, for you, Marcus. Um, this is coming from uh, Carl, uh, Carl Fuller. Um, hope all is well. Can you please ask Marcus what his favourite goal was that he scored for Ipswich? Uh, so could you pick one out, Marcus? Um, I, I think it has to be the the first one against Bolton. Um, pure. I mean, if you ask me, at the end of that, of this end of the Premier League season, the first one, I probably would have said one of the Premier League goals. But like I said, I've had time to reflect. Quite a lot of time, uh, and I think it has to be the first one uh, against Bolton because I think. I don't, I don't think if, if we wouldn't have got that goal and they got the next goal, I don't think we would have been in the Premier League the, game, the year after. So I think that's the most important goal I've scored for it. Yeah, well, it was, a, it was a terrific one, that's for sure. He goes on to say, I once interviewed you for TWTD and gave you a fridge magnet from Clacton-on-Sea. <laughs> As I recollect, you used to, supposedly, collect fridge magnets. Can you confirm on Live's Pitch TV whether you are a fridge magnet collector or is this, Marcus, an urban myth? No, I am wherever I go on a holiday or uh, wherever really um, I'll collect fridge magnets yeah <laughs> you, mu you must you, Marcus Marcus you must have a hell of a big fridge <laughs> well it's, it's, it's we didn't have but we had to get a bigger one to be <laughs> fantastic didn't John like, like, throw the magnets away or get a new fridge so I said this is a fridge that was it. So now we've got a freezer at the top and we've got a fridge at the bottom, which is great. Where it's perfect. Did, didn't well, Jono mention it on some TV program or something when we were in the Premier League and they they suddenly flew in, didn't they, in great numbers? I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I only collect them, you know, if I've been somewhere or if I'm, I'm at somewhere and I'll go and buy one. So I'm um, trying to think of my most most recent one. Oh, I'll tell you, I went to Dublin about a month ago, so I got one from Dublin from the brewery there. So I've got that's my So you, you wouldn't want our lives to pitch viewers to send you any. <laughs> no. <laughs> Which brewery was that in Dublin? <laughs> <laughs> Jameson's one. Okay. <laughs> um Martin's been in touch. My son is called Marcus. He's named after you and wants to send all the very best wishes. Uh, to you. Uh, another one here from Andy Mack. Thank you for your career and thank you for your campaigning as well. Best wishes. And um, the capacity crowd want, might want to join in with this one from Rick on Twitter. It starts with, there's only one Marcus Stewart. Can you fill the gaps in on that? One Marcus Stewart. One Marcus Stewart. Walking along, singing a song. <laughs> Walking in a stew on the land. That's it, that's enough. One Walking along, singing a song. Walking in a stew at Wonderland. Brilliant, brilliant. He goes on to say, uh, one of the best Ipswich Town chants ever. Um, and by the way, he says, your skill off the pitch in fighting MND outshines the many goals that you scored for town in your career. Really appreciative, as we all are, for what you're doing. Um, I mean, there are gazillions of these. Uh, this is from Keith. Just tell him how much he has loved and all of us wish him as many, many more years as he can battling the, uh, the cruel MND. Uh, another one here from Steve. Just tell Marcus he is an absolute legend of a man. And designed for life as a fellow Bristolian. 
uh, ITFC and official Bristol Rovers fan. Uh, Marcus is a massive football hero of mine, having many fond memories of his playing days. A quality striker. Uh, we're the same age as well. Us fans are all behind you uh, with your, uh, your fight against MND. A uh, couple more here from Michael. Town legend. And I'll never forget the goal you scored in the playoff final. What a header. I was amazed how far you got off the ground. Uh, can you ask Marcus, has he always had the ability to leap like a salmon? Yes. <laughs> um, I, I worked out, but I, I think Butch or Oz would have worked me out straight away. Um, but obviously in the lower levels of championship first year and then League One for a couple of years and then obviously championship with Huddersfield. Um, I used to like to, to kind of start out wide and get a run on people and kind of be on a running leap. And that, that's what I enjoyed, whether it's a flick on or whether it's whether it's running into space to, to, to score a goal in, in the box. You know, but some centre halves worked me out, not many, uh, when they just go and stand on me and stop me making the run I, I, I could. And it's pretty simple in my head. Uh, and it would have been for Butch and Oz because, they, you know, the top quality players, international players that, that would have knowing every, every trick in the book. So it works for me, and I was pretty good at timing. I, I got the flight of the ball really quickly, generally. It's about reactions, and I generally got the flight of the ball pretty quickly. So, um, yeah, I, I, no one ever coached me to do that. It just became uh, uh, something in my game that um, I was pretty good at, even though I was only five foot ten and a half. <laughs> well, that's that's where you're not like Gary Lineker because he, he couldn't head a cue, let alone a football. So, uh, yeah, you've done it on your own back. So, so we... hang on, so you, did you mark Marcus then, Russell, when you played against one another? Uh, no, I played midfield that day. Oh, did you? When we lost 4 0, yeah. Yeah, but Marcus scored a fantastic right foot volley from outside the far post. Malcolm Allison was manager, wasn't he? Malcolm was, yeah. Malcolm Allison, yeah. Dennis Remember Smith was our manager. That's why we lost him. He was hopeless. <laughs> what position Absolutely. I played that day? Sorry? I played right wing. Yeah. So he was, he was obviously before his time. He wanted to be played right wing and come in and cut in on my left foot like a lot of wingers do these days, inverted wingers. That is how he looked at it. Well, that's what he did um, for the first goal. You came in and I yeah. sort of volley in yeah, from no, outside the six yard and I put it with my right foot back across goal and it hit the camera off. All Do you right. remember them days? It used to be on TV on a Sunday, didn't it, in the southwest? Yeah, well, you're, the other three goals that Rovers scored that day were all from outside the 18-yard box. Yeah. 25 Justin yards Channing from them. Justin Channing. Right. Uh, 25 yeah. yards from Carl Saunders. Yeah. That's right. And 20 yeah. yards from um, Mr. Taylor, the strike partner. I think mine was the only one that was just inside the box. Mine was like the corner of the six-yard box. Oh, you are just outside back. the six-yard box, but very tight yeah. angle, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah, it was very tight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. shame we didn't have a centre-half to mark you that day. <laughs> <laughs> just, just stand on him. Uh, what some your, more, some what more... was your team that day? Can you remember it? Our team, I think we had Jerry House in the right back, Keith Welsh in goal, um... Bryant, uh, centre half. I like called Christensen. I Matty think Bryant. Matty Bryant, yeah. Christensen, yeah. left centre half. Martin Scott, left back. We yeah. had Andy Cole up front uh, with Leroy Rossini, Gary Shelton in midfield. Um, I only know this because I watched it on YouTube today. <laughs> <laughs> thought your memory was still oh, yeah, still bitter. <laughs> that was, it was amazing. That was amazing. But there's a punch up after nine minutes that intrigued me. Yeah, that was the best bit. <laughs> yeah. Some more questions, Marcus. I'm going to rattle through these, and then we've got a few other bits and pieces to squeeze in as well. Uh, this is from Kevin. His skill and calm finish in front of a packed cop to claim us that 1-0 win at Liverpool was another standout iconic moment from an incredible time spent with Ipswich, a truly wonderful player. Scoring in front of the cop, Marcus, what was that like? Uh, nice feeling, um, of course. Um, you know, we, all, we all want to play in the Premier League in the highest level, uh, to do, obviously to go at big clubs like the history Liverpool have got. Um, so to score there was, was a good feeling, especially it was a winner as well. You know, he's... It's not an FA Cup game. It's not a Carabao Cup game. It's a Premier League game. Um, so to score in the Premier League against one of the biggest cl uh, clubs in the world um, was a good feeling and, and for us to win there. Um, and the question you question I've got, and I, I don't know this, have Ipswich 
when was the last time Ipswich won there if that, before we won there? It was 94-95 and Adam yeah. Tanner scored the, the goal. Um, and it was that's the yeah. only time town of, other than when you scored, uh, the, the only time town of won at Anfield. It, how, you, many, how many times have you played there? Quite a lot, quite a lot, because obviously Terry and, and Russell played there quite a lot over the no, years. And, uh, no, we, no, I, we, we, never, never won, we never, yeah. we never won there in our day. But I must say that the cop has actually sung my name. Have they? Did yeah, they? Have we yeah. been stretched off? No. <laughs> Did they have something Thank in front you. of it? No, but the fact that I gave away two goals, they sung my name. <laughs> so there's something that Marcus has never had, the cops singing his name, but they sung my name, the buggers, I tell you. They sang Johnny Walk's name one yeah. day after he got hit in the privates by the ball. <laughs> Johnny Walk, Johnny Walk. <laughs> Great sense of humour up there, you know. Those but that, that season... Um, Marcus, we did. People didn't expect masses of town when they got promoted, but fifth. I mean, I can remember the, the game at Leeds. I think was the one when people started to really believe that this team was going to, you know, w- 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 was not just going to survive, was going to actually thrive in that division. Did, is that how it felt for the players? Uh, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure if you ask them, they were surprised. Um, you know, it's not been done in the Premier League before. It's, you know, a team that gets promoted via the playoffs gets into Europe. I think Sheffield United almost done it a few years ago. And I was praying that they didn't. Um, because it's a nice record to have. So, yeah, you know, the, 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 the odds against for someone doing that in the Premier League uh, are not with you. So it's a, it was a special, a special year. Uh, but like I say, we had a special group of players. Not one of those players, um, before they played in the Premier League that season, has ever played in the Premier League. Mm. So uh, that makes it even more special. Special. And I think it was a it? hunger, and desire, you know, um, to to for most from most from all of these players, I'd say, to to want to play in the top flight. I think that's part of the reason why we got there. And and one other thing that you're famous for, and you've touched on it already, uh, the gloves. Uh, what was it about the gloves? Everybody and they're still called Marcus Stewart gloves. Anybody got a set? I've still got my original ones. Yep. Um, what what was that all about? Oh, I hated wearing long sleeve shirts. Hated it. But I understand that your hands still get cold. You know, if you get if you wear a t shirt, your arms are still a bit cold and. Sometimes, yeah, I just thought I'd do it, and I, and I wasn't a player that took throw-ins because I've worn I've worn gloves in training before and tried to stick a throw-in with a pair of gloves on <laughs> before they put the grips on them, and you just can't do it. So I didn't take throw-ins; it wasn't going to affect the throw-ins. Um, I just thought I'd give it a go. It's the truth because I didn't want my hands to get cold, uh, and that's it. And what about you, Butch and Russ? Did you um, thing is, wear gloves? The players in the Premier in, in in football these days wearing short sleeves with gloves on. Yeah, I see it all the time. Yeah, well, nowadays it wouldn't have happened in our day. Bobby, Bobby would have been straight down and get him off. What, get the gloves what, off. What would he have said? He would have. What would he have said? Well, I can't repeat what he would have said. I <laughs> honest, but no, we didn't get those. Yeah, but I, we see that all the time now in the Premier League with the gloves, and you think, well, yeah. come on now. Uh, some players will have to wear gloves for diabetes or something like that. They have to keep their hands circulation or so. I don't know, something Rhino like that. syndrome or something like Whatever, that. Whatever, yeah. But yeah. Some, from a medical point of view, yeah. But <laughs> everybody seems to have a medical problem in the Premier League because everybody's to wear gloves. So <laughs> You didn't know. fancy wearing the Keith Weller leg warmers then? The Keith Weller mm, leg warmers? No. No. <laughs> no. no. The it touch, wouldn't, you it mean. Wouldn't, yeah. Wouldn't, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I, can, I, I know what he means. I mean... Thing is, generally, you, if you if you ran about a bit more, Marcus, you would have got warm hands. But there we are. <laughs> <laughs> Look, <laughs> uh, we'll leave it on that point for now, Marcus. Don't go away because we're going to come back to you very shortly, Marcus Stewart. Everybody. <laughs> okay, uh, time on Life's Pitch TV for our Keep It Up Challenge, sponsored by Ginger Pickle. <laughs> Now, clearly, Marcus is not in the studio with us this evening. Um, so we are looking for a volunteer to have a go at the Keep It Up Challenge. The man who sponsors the Keep It Up Challenge is here, Tony from Ginger. Do you want to have a go, Tony, or not? Yeah, I'll have a go. Hey! Go on, Tony. Come on, Tony. 
He sponsors sponsors this segment of the show. You know how it goes. You're doing this for Marcus Stewart, okay? There you go. Over into our performance area. Over there. Yep. Apparently, Fantastic. Tony, he's more of a luck, he's more of an egg chaser than an actual <laughs> ramble man. So, uh, yeah. Used to play rugby. Okay. Should we, should we get a, should we get a crossbar for you to kick over or something like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So the the top of the leaderboard. You'll be interested in this, Marcus. Scoey's got seventy nine. Uh, this is in 60 seconds. Three. He got bored. Yeah. Scoey, 79. One, One foot. One foot. Uh, Chambo, wow. 59. Alan Lee, 58. Um, and then... Connor Chaplin, 52. Connor Chaplin, 52. Dozer, 49. And the rest of us are on Russell, Russell and, yeah, there's one or two and others the, on and there. And the rest of us ain't any good. So, <laughs> so Tony, 60 seconds. Uh, Terry's going to time you. Phil's got the whistle. The capacity crowd are going to count, aren't you? Yeah. So come forward so you can see how many he does. Uh, are we ready? Hold on. If, if I don't... If, if I don't beat Phil, we'll match your donation of 250. Oh wow! Okay. If you didn't hear that, if we wow. if he doesn't beat I'm, Phil, I'm like I'm the baseline. He will match the 250 pound donation that we're making to the Derby Come River on, Foundation. Tony. How many of that? Come on. Okay. Off you go. Six, seven. Oh, two! Give him a round of applause. <laughs> it's another 250 quid. What do you think of that, Marcus? Two. Come on, Tony. Two. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the ball back. Come on, you're over there. Actually, good actually, good donation Mark, for you though. Yeah, mate. it was a good donation. Actually, he he, um, he didn't. He got very close to me. I got three, so I beat him. So <laughs> I think it was a double touch on one of those. So well, it might actually be look. Three. It's two hundred and fifty pound for a fantastic yeah, course. No, so, right. Yeah, I double hit doesn't count. Well done, Tony. <laughs> good sport, my friend. Thank you very much. There you good go. Five hundred quid. Don't forget, if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe the channel. Uh, it really does uh, help us. Uh, check out our website, www.lifespitch.tv. You can buy mugs and T-shirts on there, as beautifully modelled by Butch and uh, Russell and Phil over there and myself. Uh, it's time now for the Town News in Brief, sponsored by John Keeble Cars of Bramford, with Phil Ham from twtd.co.uk. <laughs> Oh, the news hat's on. News hat's on. I've been offered another news hat. We'll uh, see that in a couple of weeks, I think. Um, yeah, t the news today, really. Uh, winger Carl Edwards has left town by mutual consent after two and a half years at the club. Earlier this week, his loan with Oxford was cut short due to an ankle injury, which is going to keep him out of action until April. But the news then revealed that he was going to stay with them to undergo his rehab, which I kind of think, you know, you could kind of see where the where it was going from there. Um, and, um, yeah, then Town today announced that his contract had been torn up. Uh, and I think it probably, you know, all but certainly he's going to join Oxford once he returns to fitness. Um, I think, you know, he had his moments, I think, is, is, without ever really establishing himself. Made 23 starts, 40 sub-appearances and scored three goals. Uh, and was a, was, a, was a valued member of the team that got promoted last year. And I think fans will remember him very fondly uh, over the, uh, in the years to come. Uh, and the FA Cup, we've already... Um, Touched on that, town paired with National League South Maidstone, the lowest league, the lowest team, uh, the lowest ranked team left in the competition. Uh, and the game will be the January the 27th, uh, live on BBC One at 12.30. So, uh, yeah, town, good chance of going through. First time, first, 2007 last time in the fifth round. It's a long, long time, isn't it? So, um, there we go. And on Saturday, Cameron Burgess and Australia play their first match at the uh, first group match of the AFC Asian Cup uh, when they're taking on India. So uh, good luck to him and Elkan Bagger and Indonesia. They play their opening match on Monday afternoon when they face Iraq. So, yes, that's uh, that's the news in brief. Thank you very much. And brief it was as well. Um, can I just mention <laughs> as so. well in this section, um, uh, we lost an absolute town legend this week yes, in, we in Irene Davey. Uh, now, Irene has loved Ipswich Town her entire life and she passed away this week very, very suddenly, actually. Um, and I've known her since uh, there's a lovely picture of her with Terry at Portman Road. She absolutely loved Ipswich Town and I've known her since I was five years old. And we'd always chat about Ipswich Town and have a little kiss and a cuddle when we saw each other down at the ground. So um, just give Irene a, a quick round of applause, would you please? Because we have lost a, a real stalwart of Ipswich Town. A lovely lady. She was a lovely lady, and when I first joined, um, the, you know, the, with the, with the town uh, supporters, um, Martin Swallow um, wheeled her in in a wheelchair. Um, we went to meet at the suite at Portman Road, uh, and now Martin's gone, and now Irene's gone as well. So you know, the association has lost two fantastic servants, and she was lovely. She she'd welcome everybody, and she was like the doyen. She was you know, everybody sort of. 
um, asked her permission if they could do something and do this because she she knew so much and because she was Ipswich Town through and through. She'd worked uh, on the coaches, away coaches and everything else. So um, an absolute giant of a lady she really was. She used to work in Shanks's Bakery in Queensway, and I used to walk past on the way to school. Did you stop? So she's, did you stop and go Can in? you tell? She's part responsible <laughs> yeah, for yeah. my <laughs> svelte figure that I have today, but uh, we'll forgive her for that. Well, you, you, you were the best customer, were you? I was, yeah. Broken biscuits. They were lovely. Um, <laughs> Die hard. <laughs> Franz Beckenbauer passed away this week as well. Yes, he That's did. A shame, isn't yeah, it? it's a real shame. I mean, an absolute legend of a player and a manager as well. And I'm, I did have the, the chance to meet him a couple of times, and. He was everything you want your heroes to be. He really was. He was perfect, great English, and he came over after 1990 in the semi-final and shook my hand and shook all the other players' hands. And he was the first person over from the German contingent, um, and he went straight to Bobby Robson, of course, and congratulated him. So real dignity and class. And we met again when he was the manager of the team in a sort of um, charity game in San Diego, um, and he was funny. He was really good. He was just, you know, everything you wanted a, a manager to be, a player to be, um, and a legend to be as well. Yeah, what a, what a great man. Um, and Marcus, um, Mogger, Tony Mowbray, manager of Birmingham. What do you make of that? Yeah, I, I was very surprised that Sunderland got rid of him in the first place. So, uh, yeah, I think Tony didn't deserve to get sacked in the first place. Um, and Birmingham got a good manager on hands. Uh, so we'll see how it goes for him. You know, I, he was a great captain. Him and Vito were a really good partnership, of course, when, in that year we, we in, in the playoffs and, and the year, a couple of years in the Premier League. So uh, I wish him all the best. He's done loads. He's, he's done loads for the charity as well, not just because of that, because he was, he was a good pro, senior pro when he played for us. Um, uh, so I, obviously I hope he does really well there. Could you could you understand him as well? Is it... <laughs> He did, could you understand? He, he seemed to he seemed to mumble a bit. Yeah, yeah. I know what you're yeah. doing. I know what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you touched on Sunderland there, of course. Uh, your thoughts this weekend? What scarf are you going to wear, Marcus? Uh, uh, Bristol Rovers one, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's blue anyway. It's blue. Uh, listen, it's, it's God. There's some tough games for Ipswich coming up. You know, next two games. Wow. Um, you know, new manager for Sunderland, been in recently. Um, obviously, did a la the loss last week. It's Newcastle in the Cup. Ipswich, you know, three draws and then the win in the, in, the, in the FA Cup. So, you know, both teams are still going. You know, Sunderland will think with a win, it, they can be right back in the chase for an automatic promotion again. So, the next two games for Ipswich are, are, are big, you know, Sunderland and then Leicester and then obviously Maidstone away in the Cup is a bit... It'd be nice to go into the, that cup game against Maidstone having got at least 4.6, if possible, out of those two games. And I think that'd be a good return of four points. It um, is amazing where we are, though, isn't it? It's incredible to watch. It's brilliant. I mean, I, I, I'll, I'll watch it on TV. It's half past five, isn't it, on, on Sky? On, yep. on Saturday, is that right? Or Sunday? Yep, Saturday. 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 So, yeah, um, you know, Kieran would want them to get back to winning ways as soon as possible. So there's no better place... To, place to do it is against you know at Port Marine against Sunderland which will take you into the Leicester game full of confidence well I'll keep my fingers what crossed I um, uh, I think it's which might, might edge it okay do we think if you're going to edge it on Saturday oh, yes. Yes. confidence here yeah. confidence yeah, they've drawn the last three league games am I correct saying that yep. yeah yeah for Christmas so you know uh They'll, they'll be hungry to to get that, that 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 those three points, you know, and keep them keep the teams below them, or, you know, away from them a bit because there's one or two kind of catching them. Southampton or down obviously Leeds, so um, yeah, they want to do that just to get, just to take some confidence to Leicester because to get a draw or a loss, you know, it does affect players' minds when you go to the top of the table the week after. Yeah, I think it'll be a tight game. It's just to win four nil. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's good. I, I like that. I like yeah, that. That's good, yeah. Um, Marcus, I want to introduce you to someone who's in our capacity crowd. Uh, Chris is here. Chris Peachy. Give him a round of applause. Chris, come up to the microphone. And uh, tell us what you found. Um, so I went to Berry Recycling Centre. Uh, I think it was around, I should have done my research here, um, uh, late uh, September. And I went to pass one of the skips and there was a 
like a frame, the wrong way around, with the front of an Ipswich shirt. So when I turned it round, it had a certain number 11 Stuart on the back, and it had plenty of signatures on it. So I decided I'm going to take this home for myself. <laughs> and like you do in life nowadays, you've got to put it all on your social media. Look what I've found, look everyone. And I was getting people like offer me money for it, you know. And then I thought to myself, no, I'm going to be selfish, keep this on myself, and put up like my my little office at home. But it sort of sat in my utility room for like maybe two, three weeks. And I thought, well, do you know what? I contacted the club and asked them, would they reframe it? Because the frame was pretty tatty and they said they would. And then they auctioned it at the ITFC Foundation dinner. And I believe it made £1,600,000. Is that right? Yeah, no. Yeah, one six zero zero for the Derby Rimmer Foundation. Brilliant. Fantastic. Oh, well, done. well done. Marcus, what do you want to say to Chris? Brilliant. Thank you very much. I did I did read that. I have read the article on that and I've seen it on the news as well. So thank you very much. I just uh, not just my shirt, but who throws that sort of thing away? <laughs> uh, sign Marcus. No, I, mean, I thought the same. I mean, I mean I don't I don't get I don't understand that people don't see why would he just throw it away and not offer it to a friend or, or I, I just someone had a row with their partner well it must have been and he must have left the house pretty sharpish and she's got rid of a lot of stuff he had well um, uh, I'll tell you what I have got at home I'm not going to say the player it, but I, so I, I have at home a shirt that I bought off eBay from an ex-Ips which town player match worn shirt um, and it was put on eBay by an ex-girlfriend who was flogging off all his stuff. <laughs> One day I might say who that was, but not tonight. Get him on the show. I'm, I'm, and, just, uh, I'm just, I'm just, worried, much, I'm just, worried. Much it going for? I'm just worried. Oh, it was about twenty quid. I got it for. There's a bargain, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just worried about Chris because he's a man that hangs around skips. I mean, you know, hang on a minute. Not too Have you not got? Have you not got? A, you know, a real life or something else somewhere else. <laughs> Anyway, look, we've got to move on because we're, we're really running out of time. Uh, we've run out of time lots of times this evening, but we're going to keep going. Uh, it's time to have a look at what happened to ITFC on this day. Brought to you in association with Fred Olsen Logistics. <laughs> Right, well, on this day, the 11th of January, um, takes us back to 1971. Town travelled to St James's Park to face Newcastle United in their first FA Cup meeting. Mitchell put the hosts ahead before Mick Mills what? struck well, the equaliser. What? Is. Yep. Mick Mills? Mick Mills struck the equaliser with his first FA Cup goal to take the Geordies back to Portman Road. Town would win the replay 2 1. Wow. Then later on, uh, the 11th of January 2003. Ipswich stretched an unbeaten run to eight games, but only had themselves to blame for failing to win at Turf Moor. Spaniard Pablo Cunago put town ahead before going off after a clash of heads with future blue Dresa Diallo. Yeah, yeah, I remember that game. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And that's it. That's all that happened on the 11th of January so far. Well, it gave us our opportunity to mention Mick Mills. Still waiting to get him on the show, yeah. everybody. Yeah. Keep asking. I think we should I... get a petition. There's a petition yeah. coming on. <laughs> yeah, we can get him on. But we we have, we'll, have to, we'll have to have a booster seat for him. We will. Yeah, we we will, will indeed. <laughs> Time for the Man V Fat results. Uh, Marcus, these are lads who are trying to lose weight by uh, losing weight and playing football. Uh, and we do the scores every week. So this week's uh, Man V Fat. Uh, they return to action this week, and Fat certainly won over Christmas. Oh. Uh, the guys are back on it now, though, and looking forward to a great season of football and weight loss. This week's results. To lose a few pounds, five. LA Galaxy Bar, two. Seattle Quarter Pounders, two. Man Titty, three. Yay! Pork Vale, one. Hardly Athletic, seven. Largentina, 15. FC 20 Stone, four. Dynamo Kebab, four. Barely Athletic, seven. Uh, could you congratulate Pork Vale on retaining the winner's shield and Hardly Athletic for winning the Season Cup? Spaces, everybody, are available in both of the Ipswich leagues with new seasons beginning this week. So there we are. Thank you to the Man V Fat team. Uh, we are out of time. Marcus Stewart, thank you so much. You now have the accolade 
of this being the longest episode of Life's a Pitch. And couldn't we go on longer, everybody? Absolutely. We absolutely could. Marcus Stewart, everybody. Well done, Marcus. Thank you. Final word, Marcus, to the town fans watching. Uh, promotion. That's it. <laughs> Good word. Play us automatic promotion. That's what you got to think of. That's fantastic. That's the best ending to any of our shows that we've had so far. Uh, thanks also to our sponsors who make this possible. That's DPS Tech, our main sponsor. Also soon to be sponsors of the sofa. Ooh. Uh, all about hearing, marketing company Ginger Pickle. Well done, Tony, for keeping it up tonight. Well done. Well done, Tony. Uh, forward Floors. Come here, the design, the Hudson Group, Sound 4 Pro Audio, Fred Olsen Logistics, John Keeble Cars in Bramford, and the Dove in St. Helen Street in Ipswich. Thank you, top team here. Thank you, Capacity Crowd. We'll be back next week. And up the town, everybody. Up the town. Oh, mate.